We'll move on to the Knicks. And the Knicks are obviously looking at um, Donovan Mitchell. That's the main thing. But there has been a bit of chatter recently about maybe even moving Randall's contract still. And I, I wanted to get your thoughts and opinions on that. What what extent would you go to move Randall's contract? Because there's another report here, and this one's by Shams, that does suggest the Knicks could also be interested in Westbrook. But in them bringing in Brunson and uh, Barrett, you know, still being there, and I guess bringing in Mitchell, how would Westbrook mesh with the team, you know? Like, would you trade Randall up for Westbrook, or does that make any sense at all to even do? So if if we were to trade um if we were to trade for Westbrook, that would be trading Randall, of course, and that would be trying to just offload Randall, get rid of him. We don't want him, and we'd be getting nothing in return besides Westbrook. It's it's not the greatest trade for you know signing a player to Randall um to thirty million dollars a year. He was a all star last year. You really are selling at his lowest, lowest, lowest value. It's not a good idea at all, but it's the reason why people are saying potentially that might happen. And there's rumors of Shams and, you know, Mark Stein, and they're all, it's all coming out. And the reason why that's coming out is because, well, the Donovan Mitchell, you know, rumors and saying, we're going to get Donovan Mitchell. And you look at Donovan and Julius Randle, they are not going to play well together. That's just, they, they can't play well together. That's just not going to happen. You look at a team of Jalen Brunson, Donovan Mitchell, Julius Randle, Randall's probably the worst for it to have with um, Donovan. Donov- Randall's not going to play that role as a go bear and do, you know, your pick and rolls and your screens. What Randall wants is the ball in his hand. He wants to be in the post. Yep. It just, it really, when you think of a big man to play with Donovan, he's the worst one. And going back to what you were saying about Westbrook coming to the Knicks, he would, he would get bought out immediately. Yeah, yeah, it's, he wouldn't play a game in New York. Um, it's, like you said, we've got Brunson and he's just not needed. He's, um, the, oh God, the, the outroar of Knicks fans if we actually, you know, trade for Westbrook to actually play him. And he played, if he played a game in a New York Knicks jersey, it'd be a bit weird. Oh, you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't hear the end of it from Knicks fans. They would not be happy. <laughs> yeah. But in saying that though, wouldn't you try and offer Randall for Mitchell? to try and make that happen? Or do you think that the Jazz are just not interested in Randall at all? Because they've got no forwards right now, the Jazz. Like, they've got, like, 10 different guards that... Because what I what I see the Jazz doing, and I think a lot of people are starting to theorize this as well, is they might be setting up to try and do what OKC did a couple of years, where they have so many of these veterans and they try and build their tra- trade value up. And in saying that, though, you can do that. But what OKC had going for them was is they not only had you know, the three good guards that they could move any time, you know, Dennis Schroeder, Chris Paul, and there was a couple others here and there, you know, SGA, they, of course, wanted to keep it, but they had forwards and centers, Stephen Adams, Danilo Gallinari, you know, those type of players, right? You look at the Jazz, it's just like so many guards, Mike Conley, Patrick Beverly, you know, Donovan Mitchell's still on that team, Jordan Clarkson, so many guards right now. Why wouldn't they look at a Julius Randle? Imagine if they could build up Julius Randle's trade value again or at least just have him as, you know, a player to just even help bring in some people into the seats because he's going to help win some games. He's going to do that. But, yeah, what do you think? Is that is that a thing that the Jazz look at? Randle as a player they trade for Donovan Mitchell? So, before I get into that, I was going to say, for the people that don't know, I'm a massive Knicks fan. I know, like literally everything about this i'm all over this stuff like i love it to death and (laughs) pretty much utah this is coming from andy larson you know massive utah jazz um what's it called um works for the salt lake you know tribune um massive and he is pretty much came out at the very beginning saying they do not want randall randall is they do not want a piece of randall they could not think of anything worse they what it's (laughs) it's <laughs> i could think it's, of a lot just, worse if i'm the utah Jazz. <laughs> it sounds like danny ainge does not believe in the randall train and the big thing is they do not want big contracts they just want to get you know some some rookie contracts that are on some really really long contracts See, that's why they don't want rj barrett they don't want mm. rj either that's a big thing they do not want rj because they're gonna have to give him a, they're gonna have to give him a max contract next year they don't want to do that that's they don't. They want rookies that have plenty of years, 
and just they do not have to pay them immediately. It's the same thing with Reddish. They don't want Reddish. They don't want... They're very yeah. picky. They want picks. They want picks, picks, and picks. You don't think they, they want just... Toppin either? I've heard Toppin. I've heard Toppin in the rumours. The, 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 the three main plays I've heard in the rumours, uh, Crenton Grimes, that is mm. by far their favourite piece. That's who they want. They've, they've made it very clear. Um, Obi Toppin and Emmanuel Quickly. They are the yeah. three young players I've heard. It's probably going to take at least one of them, maybe two, to do the deal. If, do, do you want to hear what I think the deal will be? Yeah, give it to us. <laughs> let's see. Right, so, so I think Fournier we, better is, be in this deal. By the way, Fournier we got a match up contract. We got a match up contract. This is this is this works. This is all through NBA trade machine. It works. It's you know it's fair on both teams. What of well fair on both teams? You can disagree, <laughs> but it, it works. Okay, okay. So we're, we're talking Quentin Grimes, which yep. he can. Again, he's probably the best rookie out of those three. We did not, uh, not as in skill wise, but I'm meaning surrounding of other plays. You put Grimes in any situation, he can work. He can fit around any player. He's a three and D player. He's you know, seriously, his potential. He looks like a player that could be potentially a twenty million dollar player. He for a player being drafted close to the second round. He's he's a steal the Knicks got, and I reckon he they're gonna want Grimes. I'm counting Grimes, counting Reddish. Even though I don't think they want Reddish, but we're gonna yeah, do yeah, that yeah. for cap reasons. Um, they could McBride. always improve his value and then move him on later on through a sign and trade if they wanted. Exactly right, spot on. Um, all, all he needs is is a team that believes in him and will give him some minutes. <laughs> That's all he needs. Um, but yeah, McBride, um, at Fournier. And then what I think it would be would be this this upcoming year's first round pick, 2025 first round pick, and 2027 first round pick, all unprotected. And then we're probably talking like two pick swaps, three pick yeah. swaps. That's I would I would say they'll probably go three just because I think there's going to be a team out there that is going to offer a shit ton of first round picks. But the yeah. way that will entice them to go the next way is you guys will have a probably a better young you offer up better young players than what the other team probably will. But Jazz have to figure out their guard situation. You can keep all these guards and try and increase their value. But at the end of the day, you're going to be trying to fit Evan Fournier, Mike Conley, Patrick Beverly, Jordan Clarkson, Miles McBride. Um, and there's going to be a couple others that I'm already forgetting. Emmanuel Quickly as well. All of these players you're going to be trying to fit in and give minutes to. And you're going to be seeing nights where Pat Bev is going to be playing 14, 15 minutes. And that's not going to increase his value at all. So they're going to have to figure out what they're going to do with their guard situation right now. Because they've probably got like, right now, eight guards on the roster or something. Do that Knicks trade and you're probably going to add even more to that. And you're going to be seeing dudes like Mike Conley playing the three at Utah. <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a mess. So they've got to figure out what they're doing with their guards. Through the wastelands, through the highlands.